welcome to Cheap Shot Entertainment. You are the Cheap Shot Nation and I am your host Luke as always and we're going to take you through everything that happened at NXT TakeOver Phoenix 2019 like they're going to do another one perhaps maybe next year it's going to be in Phoenix again. Uh, cracking cracking show and we're just going to get straight on to it so in the meantime click that notification bell to know when we upload new video content and there's plenty more to come after this and click the subscribe button follow us on instagram twitter and facebook and enjoy the show your first match of the evening taking place on the 26th of january 2019 in phoenix arizona i can't remember i think it was something like the talking stick arena uh, in phoenix um, was your tag team championships for nxt and it was the war raiders versus the undisputed era boom um, ah, yeah, great way to start off the show uh, with a tag team match. It's very well noted that I do like my tag team wrestling. I always have, and I think there's something to it as long as it's done correctly. And NXT seem to do things correctly. Um, every single time I see a tag team match in NXT, it's always good. Whether it's on a pay-per-view, whether it's on normal TV tapings at um, Full Sail University, it's always, always good. Um, so there's a hot start for the War Raiders on this one. Um, uh, with uh, the Undisputed Era getting the jump on the War Raiders to start with, uh, War Raiders coming back really, really quickly and clearing the ring, um, getting on top of the Undisputed Era nice and early. Momentum shift as the Raiders go for a quick victory. And uh, Kyle O'Reilly takes out uh, War Raiders' legs, takes out Roe with a low kick to the knee just as they were about to hit the fallout. Uh, and then strong knocking Hansen off the top turnbuckle as they were about to hit that move. Uh, Hansen goes splat on the outside as he attempts a suicide dive and everyone moves out of the way and from this point on the undisputed era are very much on top towards until the end of the match where the War Raiders would come back. There's a double handspring elbow as undisputed era try a double team on Hansen, very impressive for such a big man to be so agile as to do that kind of move. He also climbs up to the top rope for the finish, which is the fallout, which is a backdrop driver leg drop from the top rope combo on Kyle O'Reilly. Hansen gets the pin, and your new tag team champions for NXT at TakeOver Phoenix are the War Raiders. Again, fantastic match. I suggest you go and watch it. Get the network. Uh, if you get the network now, you can get the uh, pay-per-view known as the Elimination Chamber. Uh, so that will be really good. And because um, there's uh, new champions being crowned there at the, uh, at the Elimination Chamber. In an Elimination Chamber match, it is the Women's Tag Team Championships. Anyway, this match was great to start off. Uh, it got the crowd worked up, got the crowd real hot for the rest of the night. So congratulations to the War Raiders, Hanson and Rowe. They also had a kick-ass uh, entrance with Vikings lining the stage as well. Noted that usually in WWE and NXT, if you get a big entrance, you're probably going to win. Unless your name's Rusev at WrestleMania and you're going against John Cena for the US Championship. Anyway, uh, enough of that. We're going to move on to the second match. The second match of the card is uh, features Matt Riddle and Cassius Ono. As Cassius Ono describes Matt Riddle as a shiny new toy, he, um, this rivalry has been going ever since Riddle started, made his debut in NXT. Uh, Riddle's 
pretty much always got the run on on Cassius Ono, um, being a bit more of the aggressor when he needs to be. But um, Cassius Ono has had his moments over Matt Riddle as well. So um, yeah, going into this with a bit you know, quite evenly matched. Uh, the first match they had ended in I think eight seconds with a quick knee to the face and Riddle getting the pin. Uh, ono has beaten Riddle in the meantime and their match last time Riddle won as well. Um, so this one's no different. Riddle does win in around sort of eight ten minutes um, but much more of a, a match in this one with Cassius Ono putting some uh, offense together. Um, there's a flying forearm from Matt Riddle. Ono gets on top very quickly after the initial start from Matt Riddle and um, after the initial flurry Ono tries a suplex but this is countered into a rear naked choke by Matt Riddle. Of course a background in um, in MMA with the UFC, <clears throat> uh, Riddle hits a German suplex and uh, on Ono, and Ono then bites his toe, which is a bit cringy, but um, hey, it worked. Um, uh, yeah, so a bit cringy there. And Liger Bomb from uh, Cassius Ono can't put Riddle away. Uh, there's a moonsault from Riddle, and this makes Ono tap, uh, no, sorry, Riddle makes Ono tap with some forearms to the back of the head, taking uh, everything he's learned from UFC in making, making matches end with some vicious strikes to Cassius Ono. Cassius Ono has no choice but to tap out. Um, great way to finish a match. It's not very often we get that in WWE. It's either a straight submission or... Um, you know, so this is kind of a technical knockout. He's had to, can't defend himself, so he's had to tap out. Uh, interesting finish. Um, like I said, going back to uh, Riddle's roots in UFC for that victory. But your winner, and I don't see this rivalry moving much further than this because it's like 3 1 to Riddle now um, in terms of the matches. Maybe they'll have one more, make it, uh, an, it like a best three out of five but obviously Riddle's already got three so who knows uh, great match uh, short shortest match on the card but um, again great match uh, much better than their other matches in fact um, definitely more well contested between the two and uh, yeah you got two really good wrestlers here showing what they can do uh, shiny new toy and the grizzled veteran in Cassius Ono but great match suggest you go and watch it uh, two great matches so far on the card and it only gets better from here the third match on the card for NXT TakeOver Phoenix was in fact uh, <laughs> the North American Championship held currently by Ricochet uh, he is the second ever North American Champion after Adam Cole, baby. Um, and he's going against Johnny Gargano on, under the suggestion of Tommaso Ciampa. Maintains that it wasn't his idea, but it clearly was. Um, great match. Easily uh, the sleeper hit of the card, but we knew we were going to get something wicked from these two. Johnny Gargano, Johnny Wrestling, Johnny Takeover, whatever you want to call him. Whether you like him or you don't like him, his new character, his new attitude. He is a fantastic wrestler. Uh, also appears in the Royal Rumble as well, which was really cool. Um, and um, we did get a little bit of a surprise uh, at the end of the night, which I'll go through uh, uh, towards the end of the video. Um, so to start, we get a st early stalemate, headlocks, arm bars, uh, key locks and things like that, trying to wear each other down. Obviously, both guys are high flyers. They're both quick. Um, lots of near misses, lots of jumping, lots of leaping, lots of ducking and all that kind of stuff. Um, there's a split.
Onboard moonsault to the outside by Ricochet on Johnny Gargano and that gives him momentum uh, going forward in this match. Uh, there's a brain buster to the outside and a power bomb to a cross face um, and a corkscrew plancher by um, Ricochet as well to the outside. Shooting staff press and a sp another springboard moonsault by Ricochet and that happens inside the ring but this match was completely insane as you can imagine from these two um there's a frankensteiner by ricochet uh, by johnny gargano uh frankensteiner basically ricochet was on the turnbuckle on the top sat down um johnny gargano tries a uh, hook and runner off the top and ricochet pulls a will osprey and lands on his feet so yes, they're definitely taking that from New Japan. Um, so he lands on his feet and um, Gar Gargano then hits the Gargano escape. There's a slingshot DDT by um, Johnny Gargano dive slingshot DDT, a discus clothesline, a super kick. Ricochet hits the Gargano escape. Gargano hits Ricochet's finisher, uh, breaks a super, break, breaks it on a suplex, uh, tries then the suplex on the concrete, hits it, um, both guys down at this point. A, there's another slingshot DDT from the outside in by Johnny Gargano. Ricochet cannot answer the count of three as Johnny Gargano goes for the pin. We have a new North American champion in NXT and his name is Johnny Wrestling, Johnny Gargano. This match was absolutely insane. It was so, so good. And I've seen some really good wrestling this weekend. Um, really really good uh, and like I say the matches keep getting better um, but it's hard to top this one the last match I think just slightly may may be on the same sort of level but great match so far a great pay-per-view as you'd expect from an NXT takeover so we're going to move into the fourth match now as we go forward in this video review and I hope you're enjoying it click the subscribe button and all that kind of stuff on to the fourth match of the evening now. It is the third of four championships being defended in five matches at NXT TakeOver Phoenix. Um, it is the NXT Women's Championship. It is Shayna Baszler versus Bianca Belair, who is well known for her hair and her whipping style in the ring. She has been on a bit of a run as Bianca Belair. She's beaten Nikki Cross, she's beaten all comers to get this number one contender shot and she does surprise a lot of people by keeping up with Shayna Baszler on this one but we do get to see yeah the other horsewomen, um, the stooges because they're made out to be a little bit dumb when they come down to the ring I'm not gonna lie they do remind me of Patson and Briscoe back in the day um, and ultimately that is what costs um, Belair the match um, but I like Shayna Baszler I think she's got a great character I think she's fantastic in the ring and she's definitely getting a lot better on the mic as well um, but Baszler controls the match early uh, but Belair uses her strength to come back in. There's a hair pull into the post. Obviously, the hair, Bianca Belair's hair, comes right down past her waist. Um, and it was going to be used against her at some point um, in a wrestling match. And Shayna Baszler does it. They're both on the outside, both one, one side of the ring, one's at, other, one's at the other. Shayna Baszler pulls the hair. Bianca Belair goes straight into the post. And uh, from there, Baszler is um, on top, basically. From there, in control. Knee strikes, knees and strikes, uh, using um, hair to the advantage of Shayna Baszler. Belair hits a spear on Shayna Baszler to come back. There is a hair whip which notably cuts Baszler 
open on the stomach area, which looks quite nasty, to be honest. Um, the referee down, Dyer tries to hit the KOD and hits it. Shafira and Jasmine Duke come down to the ring for the distraction. Uh, and the Karakota clutch, or Karasota clutch, or whatever it's called, is hit by uh, Baszler. Be Belair does break it using her strength <coughs> the first time, but it does get cinched in for a second time after Belair goes for the 450 splash, and that is counted again into the Karakota clutch. Carabuta clutch, clutch, or whatever it's called, I will check that out. Uh, Baszler retains the championship via submission. Baszler, uh, Belair cannot uh, get out of the Carasota, Caragota, whatever it is, the clutch thingy that Baszler does. And um, that's it. Uh, submission victory for Shayna Baszler. Obviously, the Stooges help out Baszler again. I can see that playing into a match later on. Um, you know, the band from ringside or it's cage match or something like that. One notable thing that NXT haven't done um, is a Hell in a Cell match. So who knows? We may get a women's Hell in a Cell match uh, later down the line. But again, really, really good match. Uh, crowd tends to go flat for women's matches and it's not just in NXT and it's a shame because this one it was really good uh, Bella showed a lot of what she could do and Baszler just showing more of what she can do already um, yeah like I say really good match um, and uh, another submission victory for the champ the, only, the first ever and the only two time champ in NXT UK with regard to the women's division. So your winner again is Shayna Baszler. Your final match on the card is NXT, the NXT Championship, the champion Tommaso Ciampa defending against Alistair Black, the man who he took the championship off at the back end of last year. Um, so champ has been a really good champion a fighting champion um nearly going what must be about six months now with that championship uh alistair black getting injured uh storyline taken out by johnny gargano and all that kind of stuff and um, wants his title back uh, but I don't see him being on NXT very much longer because I think he's probably going to get a call up uh, at some point, perhaps after WrestleMania maybe. Anyway, uh, going into the match, Black is in control. <laughs> Excuse me. So, going into the match, Black is in control early on um, with Champa coming back strong after suplex to the steps. Um, both men fighting outside a championship match. Referees tend to let a bit more go in these matches than they usually do. Champa then focuses his attention on the left knee of Alistair Black. Um, there's a hang out. Uh, So Gargano, uh, so Champa goes for the knees of Alistair Black, taking out, taking out his main weapon, which is his strikes with his feet, well known for his kicking game. Uh, Black does hit a kick to Champa, but it doesn't get all of it. It's not long again before Champa gets back on top. Um, of Alistair Black again focusing on the left knee of Alistair Black. Black comes back, exposes the concrete floor from the padding to the outside. Um, Champa does crash hard to the floor as Alistair Black hits a double knee. Notably, this, mat, this move would hurt Black as well, and it did. Um, <coughs> Champa. <coughs> Is, becomes victim of the black mass, manages to roll over just as Alistair Black goes for the pin. Um, Champa, like I say, rolls out. Alistair Black does then go for another black mass, doesn't quite hit it, can't extend his knee. There's a 
DDT from Tommaso Ciampa, the Angel's Wings, uh, as it were, also known as the fairy tale ending. He hits three of those consecutively, and Ciampa gets the pinfall for the win. Again, fantastic match, rival with Gargano, Ricochet, and um, your champion, still champion, reigning and defending NXT champion is Tommaso Ciampa. After the match, Ciampa is celebrating at the top of the ramp, notably Johnny Wrestling comes out doesn't say a lot to him doesn't say anything to him in fact just holds up his United at least uh, North American Championship as Gog as Champa holds up his NXT Championship and both celebrate at the top of the ramp as we go off air incidentally there was a WWE.com exclusive thereafter where Alistair Black comes up the ring, Ricochet up the ramp, Ricochet comes out, um, joined by Adam Cole, and I forget the last person who came out there, and we get um, a showdown uh, between the six of them, and that match has been announced for half-time heat, something that happened during the Super Bowl this Sunday um, <clears throat> uh, right, it might not have been this Sunday actually because it might have been last night, I don't know um, I'll check up on that but uh, yeah, during Halftime Heat there is a six man tag match uh, featuring NXT Superstar, so look forward to that one if it hasn't happened already I don't know when the Super Bowl is just look at wrestling and so that is everything that happened at NXT UK at NXT UK no we've done that NXT TakeOver Phoenix uh, took place on the 26th of the first 26th of January 2019 great show across the board uh, wasn't disappointed by this one at all um, just was a icing topping uh, to the rest of the weekend which featured a lot of live wrestling for me which was really really cool um, but yeah really good really good pay-per-view uh, so go and watch it if you've got the network really good I can't put into words how good it actually was I really enjoyed it um, so with that said uh, we've taken you through everything that happened at NXT TakeOver Phoenix expect some fallout at the next taping of NXT at Full Sail University if they manage to get back there in time and we'll leave you there so hit the subscribe button drop kick that notification bell to know when we upload new content to the channel and there'll be plenty of it in 2019 um, hit, uh, join us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook and leave us a comment down below let us know what you think of the video give us suggestions what would you like us to re report on what would you like us to review um, we need some ideas guys we're nearly at 200 subscribers we want to keep you guys happy we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you so we thank you very much for your support in 2018 2019 and we hope it will continue from here hope you've enjoyed the video and i will see you next time on cheap shot entertainment